it was like, how do we better improve the efficiencies for our PMs and our PEs, Yeah, but keep them here? Welcome to the Reality Capture Network, where we focus on technology-driven innovation, education, and community. The Reality Capture Network, bringing the future to you. On this episode of the RCN Podcast, the Senior Reality Capture Manager at Kimley Horn, Ryan Thomas. Was at a conference and I saw Pharaoh scanners, a spinning box, right? I was like, <laughs> what is this thing? Yeah. And at that point, it really kind of struck me that that is going to change the game. Total stations on their sites, everything had to be buttoned up. Unless you have a connection doing it in the field, how does anybody even get exposed? Part of what we're working on is trying to bring more awareness to that. It's going to be hard to minimize yeah. the size of it, but the speed, the best experiences I've ever had, and really gave me a deep, rich knowledge of not just oil and gas, but consultation in and of itself. And that's where I kind of got my first taste of technology. They're all tools at the end of the day, but if you don't know the workflows for each one of yeah. them, they render themselves useless. All right, welcome to the Reality Capture Network. Today, we've got Ryan Thomas with us here in the studio. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. We, uh, we're going to do what we normally do. We want to introduce you and kind of dig into your story a little bit before we get into deep into technology. So we're going to start with your story. Yeah. We want to we want to start back from where you're from, where you grew up and take us on your journey. Man, it's been an interesting <laughs> journey. <laughs> it's been an interesting journey. Um uh again, Matt, thank you for having me. Um everybody at RCN, you guys do wonderful things for our community and and our little industry niche. So, um thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Um as far as my background, um from Denver, Colorado, born and raised, um family, father in the military side of things. Uh, mom, majority of my family is all teachers and educators. So it was supposed to be inherently embedded into my future to be a teacher, uh, either a football coach or something along those lines. Um, and I just got all those teachers out there. You guys are absolute saints for dealing <laughs> with our children. Um, but I, I could not do that. So we, uh, um, Grew up in Littleton, Colorado, and then uh, went to college at University of Northern Colorado. Go Bears. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I went twice over a uh, bachelor's degree in public relations and advertising, and then um, a master's degree in sport business, Ooh. which is kind of random how I got ended up here. That's awesome. I know. I can I can picture the first one, though. Yeah. The PR and ad? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like writing. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Uh, uh, sports editor for the local sports paper, our newspaper uh, up in Greeley, and both of those seem fitting. Yeah, it's um, it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> so, um, and it, when you're that young and you're writing in the newspaper, how many times people are like, "I read your article the other day, it sucked," or "I read the article the other day, I loved it." Yeah, you know, um, it's nice to get that. Cry. I've always feeded um, feeded off of that criticism yeah. from other other yeah. people. So. Um, but basically outside of, after college, um, went to grad school, didn't know what to do. 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. you know, nobody, oh, that was such an interesting time frame. Yeah. So were you trying to get into any specific roles or industries at that point or what happened? Yeah. I wanted to go into the medical sales piece. Who doesn't, I mean, mm. coming out of college, medical sales, um, I knew the money was good, but predominantly I, I really liked the medical side of things. Mm. So, um, and the technology side of things specifically within sport oriented, uh, medical. Okay. And what's interesting, Matt, is I went and got my master's degree in sport business. Um, kind of fell in love with the whole sport world. I played sports yep. growing up, football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse was just so much fun, man. Yep. And then you get into, the actual competitive side of thing, the business side of sport, especially college. And, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, there's football, there's basketball, mm -hmm. there's hockey on. Like, you're working those holidays. You're, you're really grinding that. Um, and the pay is very, very, very minimal. Um, in addition to that, um, 
it's just you're, you're pulled away from your family and you have yeah. to move around to really get your foot in the door. You're looking at smaller D3, D2 yep. universities. Yep. Moving around for different positions. I hope everybody out there in Nebraska, I understand um, that you guys are big Cornhusker fans, but I just could <laughs> I, Omaha, Nebraska, I'm good. Lincoln, Nebraska, I'm good. So, um, but um, I worked at Air Force Academy for the football team for three years doing sponsorships and fundraising, oh, cool. and then University of Denver uh, men's lacrosse, men's hockey. And got out of that um, because I just – it, it was not the right fit. I wanted to get in the business world. So um, went to a more of a recruiting headhunting standpoint. I cool. love people interaction. Yep. Um, God. And it, it changed my entire world. Yeah. Um, so we were doing oil and gas recruiting. Yeah. And um, that was wild. I bet. <laughs> wild. That's a busy industry. It is. It is. And you look at. Everybody in uh, North Dakota, um, Odessa, Permian, Midland, um, it just was a wild time frame in 2012 through 2014. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys remember that when oil prices were extremely high. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it was one of my, the best experiences I've ever had um, and really gave me a deep, rich knowledge of of not just oil and gas, but consultation in and of itself and that's where i kind of got my first taste of technology um Mm. because they were running total stations on their sites and everything had to be you know buttoned up Um, so while recruiting you started started seeing about that yeah i started seeing it and the survey piece has always intrigued me in some aspect um just you don't know about it man yeah like unless you go to school for it Mm -hmm. you just don't know about it yeah. And, you know, it's it's sad because you really look at it nowadays and it's kind of a dying practice. Yeah. Yeah. It's something we talk about quite a bit. I know. Is is there's not a lot of awareness to the need for it, why it's important, ways it's used. Um, I think most people that get into the survey world, uh, it's been like their grandparents were surveyors or their dad was a surveyor, which is how I got into yep. it. You know, and, and usually it's like, I think for a lot of surveyors, if you ask them their story, it was accidental. Yeah. Like I was in high school. I knew this guy who was like, Hey, do you want to come work this, (laughs) work on this crew? You just, you don't really have to know much. You will just train you on the job. You come in as a chain man. And then they're like, Oh, this is an interesting industry. And there's, there's opportunity here. And then they, they learn how to run the gear and they move into a party chief or then they get promoted into the office and then they work for 10 years and then they become a servant. Like sure. that's the majority of the story for, for the industry. <laughs> but, but it's, di- why is it dying? And that's what, yeah. what I've always wanted to know is, is you know, I look at what even Aaron and what you guys are doing out in California and it's, the work is just nonstop. Yeah. Um, I think, um, and we, we talked about this a bit at our last conference, and we're going to have a panel on it again this year, um, talking about about that, about how do we solve the problem. Yeah. Um, and I think I think one of the reasons that it's happened a bit is just, in, you know, in the more recent decades, there's a lot of other industries that have kind of boomed that are easier, that are or not, not even necessarily easier, but when you compare nowadays – who wants to go work at Facebook and sit in an office space with, you know, unlimited snacks and AC and high pay versus riding a truck and go out in the field in the heat and work. And, you know, I think there's so many different industries that have kind of blown up that are, are to the younger generations more desirable. Yep. And then the survey industry and, and even construction engineering, all of these, um, they're, they're not seen in such a highlight Com- right. comparison, you know, when you compare the two. Um, but I think that's where our technologies we're getting into are playing a huge role is for kids coming into college or getting out of college. It sounds a lot more attractive to fly drones and do laser scanning yeah. and, you know, create gaming environment worlds and virtual reality than just, Hey, you're going to be in a truck holding a rod uh, in the heat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the technologies I think are going to be a big, big role in that. And, and part of what we're working on is trying to bring more awareness to that, 
because yep. people still don't know that some of these career paths are even options. Right. And a lot of them take no degrees and no four, six, eight, ten 10 years of schooling or training or so many of these roles are on the job. You're, you're just learning on the job. There's not, you know, there's not a lot of opportunity to go out there and get trained on them right now. Right. Well, and again, in college, like unless you hear about it or unless you have a connection that's actually doing it in the field, how does anybody even get exposed? You know what I mean? Like how, if my sons did not know that I was going through this, like a two-year-old and three-year-old sons yep. um, back in Denver. And um, if they did not see me either flying drones or messing around with yeah. laser scanners or robot robotic dogs in the house. Yeah. How do they get exposed to that world unless they see it via social media yep. and start pursuing it that yeah. way? Which again, thank you very much for changing the game for for not just us, but for generations. Yeah. Um, this yeah. RCN, this podcast, um, chain will will single handedly change somebody's life in, in so many different avenues. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I like about it most is is seeing that happen where, yeah. you know, I, I get someone that sends me a LinkedIn message that's like, Hey, I've been doing this and I, you know, whatever the job is. And I really want to know how to get into this industry because it looks really cool. And we see what you're doing and we watch your episodes and we hear about all these roles. We didn't even know this was there. How do I get started? Yeah. Is there anywhere you can point me for training? And it's like, okay, the more and more we hear that type of feedback, it's like, okay, we just need to keep creating the place for those people to go, to find it, to learn, to, <laughs> yeah, you know, the breeding create grounds. Opportunity. Yeah. The breeding yeah. grounds, buddy. So, okay. So back to your story. Oh, um, so you were recruiting, you started learning oh about the technology, seeing some of those trades yep. in the industry. And then what happened? OPEC flooded the market, the oil and gas market. Um, things got really crazy, really, really quickly. Um, and got out of what I was currently doing with oil and gas, which really bummed me out. I love that community. I love supporting that community. Um, and went into, um, had an opportunity to go to, to CH Tool Mill, uh, prior to the Jacobs acquisition. So, um, got, had a amazing opportunity at CH, um, working with some of the best, biggest leaders in the engineering uh, field yeah. um, as far as Department of Defense, uh, federal government work. Um, f we won the bid for uh, the FIFA Olympics in 2022, uh, which is exciting. It's going to be exciting yeah. to finally see that like come to fruition. <laughs> I, I mean, and that was, I was at CH in like 2017. Wow, back. Ish. Yeah. So it's cool to be able to see what we won Um yeah. Going to be able to see it on on television. That's here, cool. Here in a few months, so um, Jacobs acquired CH. Um, I didn't want to relocate my family at that point in town to Dallas, um, so was at a conference um, and I saw Faro scanners. Wow! And I was, yeah, I saw this the spinning box. Right, I was like, <laughs> what is this thing? Yeah. Um, and at that point, it really kind of struck me that like that is going to change the game yeah. how yeah how is yeah. it um so went on to pharaoh's webpage and uh link via linkedin and applied and next thing you know i got thrown into the wolves that's sweet yeah All so right. um worked at pharaoh sling and scanners um obviously worked with you that's how yeah. we met so yep. It's like I said, it's amazing to see where you've come from yeah. and how you've uh, expanded and uh, just so damn proud on, on your guys' end to see that growth on your, uh, for both Nexus and RCN. So it's going to be interesting to see how the industry evolves. But um, I just remember seeing the, uh, the, the, um, the X series units from Pharaoh um, transition over to the new S1s. And it was like, yeah. 75% speed reduction. Yeah. You know, you oh, could, that was huge. It was huge. Yeah. It was huge for Pharaoh at that point. And it was huge for the entire market. Yep. Um, yep. That you can make that spinning box quicker. You're not, it's going to be hard to minimize yeah. the size of it, but the speed. Yeah. Uh, but even integrity. both, like when Pharaoh came out with their, when Pharaoh came out with their first unit, it was a lot smaller than anything else available. Yeah. Oh yeah. And faster. And the color was better. And like, 
and then you see they made theirs and then there's two, bum, three, bum, four bum. more. And, yep. um, yeah, that's the fun thing about new technology as, as when it's that new, when it's like, there's, there's one person thinks of it. Now it's giving some highlight to the industry to go, Oh, I think we could add this to it or change this. Or so now you start seeing mobile scanners, handheld scanners, you know, everything's increasing and moving. Um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, for those that don't know, even Kimley Horn. Yeah. Um, what's who, who is Kimley Horn? Just give us the high level overview and then we can dig a little into, um, like your role and, and the department and like how, how things are going for you guys as a company adopting and implementing the technology. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kimley Horn. So we're headquartered out of Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. Um, we're a large engineering design firm. So, um, we predominantly we focus in utilities, civil engineering. Um, we're our sports venues is uh, one of the top sports venue um, engineering firms in the country. Um, we compete with the Jacobs, the Acoms, yep. um, those type of entities as well. So, but what's unique about Kenley Horn is is we're we're a, s- a smaller engineering firm, and by that we're not eighty thousand, ninety thousand, a hundred and twenty thousand people. Yeah. We're, we're between that five to 8,000 person um, as far as our employee mark. Yep. But we're seeing major, major, major growth. And I'm I, I, speaking for Kimley Horn onto it. That's predominantly because of the culture that they push out. Mm. Um, it's super unique. Um, it's, it is changing the game from an engineering standpoint where you are a number. You almost yeah. feel like a number because of how big it is. Um, Kimley Horn is very unique in that facet. Uh, they're more of like a law firm where everybody's a partner um, mm-hmm. and they treat you as such. Believe it or not, we don't have titles, <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. is really strange. Yeah, I thought um, that was unique. It is. It is really, it is. It was straight. I've been with them for almost three years. It's still strange to me. Um, but it allows you to remove when you're talking to somebody and you're working with what may, they may be a VP in the title land. But when you're on a proposal or a pursuit with them, you're not looking at them with a VP hat on. You're looking at them as somebody that is you're coordinating yeah. with to get that effort and win that work. Yeah. So That's one of one of the things I love about well, everything, I guess, business, life, there is no one way. Yeah. Like, you know, you can be creative in how you structure a business or how you use a, a tool or a technology or how you run a team. There's there's options. Options. And you just have to, like you said, you have to be creative and open minded onto how to do it. Um, and, and for Kimley, they've done a great job on that. Um, but again, on our, as far as our focus groups, uh, solar, water, wastewater, um, fed space, um, utilities, yeah. it, it's really focused along those lines, yeah. which reality capture falls into mm-hmm. almost every one of those niches. Yeah. But trying to embed it into a large, into a larger firm like that is, it has been an obstacle and a hurdle. How, what are, what are some of the. What are some of the difficulties you see internally as a big company trying to implement in, in a major way? Absolutely. What are some of the challenges? You have people that have been civil engineers that are used to doing things in a specific way. Yep. CAD, photos, site walks. Yeah. And once COVID hit, it changed the game. Yeah. It changed the way that people actually get out to a site. Mm-hmm because they could or they could not, um, mm-hmm. or they, the whole team couldn't go. It was it really became unique. And at that point, it was my first year with Kimley Horn, and um, it was like, how do we better improve the efficiencies for our PMs and our PEs, yeah. but keep them here? Mm-hmm. Well, we go out, we scan it, we throw them the three-dimensional model, and um, we give them everything. So it's that has been a good breakthrough with Kimley. But again, the obstacles that we're still continuing to run into is people are, they, they're very stuck in their ways onto it and they're afraid yeah. to adapt it. Yeah. Whether they've tapped into this technology three, four, five years ago and it burned them. Yep. And yep. I get that. Yeah. I totally get that. The tech is still in its infancy. I mean, yeah. as you know, yeah. we're, we're just getting to, to like amazing accuracies with land based technology. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but five years ago, that was a thought that was still a thought. So I think for, 
for Kimley Hornum itself, adapting the technology and really trusting into it is is going to be in a, an evolution that is um, still in the very beginning yeah. of its process. Yeah, I think a lot of people picture, and I used to as well before I worked at one, um, I think a lot of people have that idea of, oh man, there's this huge company, and this is nothing specific to Kimley Horn. This is just about big companies in general trying to adopt it. It's um, even even when high ups in the firm uh, agree and see the use for it, um, it's a lot harder than people think yeah. to actually implement it and grow it. You, Absolutely. when you think about a large company, you're like, you have 200 offices. We should, it should be like, we, we can just, Go. we <laughs> can just, you know, <laughs> sell them on scanning and drone and like it's internal. It's so valuable. Yeah. We're just going to go out and do it. We're going to have thousands of jobs immediately. Um, and it's still, it's, it's almost like you're still selling to us. It's almost like another company. Like literally. Uh, even the way a lot of big companies operate, they're literally just hundreds of different firms. And they're like, yeah. you got to talk with, you know, you have to try to convince that division or that company, company within the company. Um, it's a difficult process. And then there's the side that I think a lot of firms continue to battle is like, there's so, they once they get into it, they learn there's so many different phases. There's survey needs, there's underground utility mapping needs, there's drone needs, there's laser scanning needs, there's then when you when you get the capture, <laughs> then there's the create the drawings, create the models, yeah. do the analysis. And it's like, man, to be able to operate all of that, it's going to take 100 people, yeah. you know, and and so yeah, each company then goes, well, how do we how do we make the decision on which piece to do internal, which piece to outsource or partner on, you know? Uh, and then there's what we, even what we talked about earlier, just a lack of available resources. Yeah. Everybody's trying to hire somebody who does scanning or does modeling or, and there's not enough current trained staff in the world to yeah. handle the current workload. And we also are seeing the whole industry growing like crazy. Yep. So I think there has to start being a way to train more people faster, almost again, like, treating this as like a trades job where it's like, yeah. oh, we just need to send a bunch of people to come learn this mm -hmm. because the industry is growing and there's not enough people know how to do it. <laughs> Absolutely, buddy. And it's going, it goes back to what you were talking about as far as how laggy the industry has been on really getting human capital involved. And on our end, we have the Kimley Horn prides themselves off what's called shifting. So if there's a transportation engineer, is, say it's a designer, CAD guy, young kid, but he's really good from the tech space. Like he, he's got mm -hmm. that type of visual thought process, which you know you have to have in our field, to visually look at something to be able to, com to capture it. And we're able to shift him over, train him just enough so he's dangerous in the field, right? He's able to move the scanner around, press the buttons, get it yeah. captured. Then we take and, and are able to process that. Um, that's unique in and of itself. And with how the 90 some odd offices that Kimley Horn has nationwide, you would, like you said, you would think <laughs> it would be so easy to just tap into those. Yeah. But it's just, it's just not, there's so much yeah. more involved into it. And um, like I've said, trying to find somebody that knows how to do this, you, you can go out and find an, a, an accounts payable person or accounts receivable or an HR coordinator, marketing, whatever. Yeah. You can go do that. Yeah. But, we are the people that are in our industry are literally purple unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like trying to, trying to find slightly them. rare. I mean, you, there's a lot of purple unicorns around <laughs> in uh, maybe not here in Boise, but they're somewhere. Uh, uh, Utah <laughs> maybe there, or Montana. I don't know yet. So, um, but they're extremely hard to find. Yeah. And once you have them, you got it. You got to hold on to them. You got, you got to take care of them. Um, they're the ones in the field, just in the in the absolute trenches, grinding yeah. it out. And um, if you don't take care of them, you're back to square one. And you know as well as I do, um, that's not a fun space. Not a fun space to be when you're trying to re basically restart. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I think that's yeah, putting a focus on trying to get more people into the industry and into roles Absolutely. because otherwise, that's just going to keep happening too. Yeah. Like we, you know, several years ago there weren't a bunch of companies hiring for people that were experts in laser scanning and scan to BIM and drone. They didn't like, know about it. No, nobody was hiring for it. Right. So it was just kind of a normal position if you worked your way into one. It 
as the awareness is growing, the need is growing, like these are becoming quickly becoming very valuable positions, expensive to hire for. And companies are, are seeing like, if we don't figure out how this works and yeah. the, and the positions and the pay and the value that's coming out of these, then those people are going to keep getting stolen and move around and go to different places because the industry, it is such a need. Yeah. And it's for every, it's the technology is going across every industry too. So it's not like this is a role that we just figured out some new um, oil and gas pipe designer right. that, that is now this big need. It's like laser scanning people apply in forensics, entertainment, architecture, active construction, yep. oil, oil and gas, nuclear, like every industry needs this type of service and this type of work. So you, you're just going to see this continue to be a problem until, until there's some balance of like people getting into these roles. Absolutely. Uh, well, municipalities, water, wastewater groups, yeah. like for a pure asset management, they should be able, they should be scanning that stuff all day long. Yeah. But like you said, trying to get and find and identify, um, Oh my Lord, it's been, yeah. it's a, it's a brute. Yeah. And I, and I'm speaking, probably we're speaking probably on behalf of everybody. The whole wor yeah, maybe, world. <laughs> <laughs> maybe other people are able to nope. you know, crack that. Or no, not, they're but. not. No, the best, like, I mean, out of hundreds of companies we talk to, it's, it's across the board. Yeah. Um, the, the way most people have tried to get around it is just creating internal training processes because um, there literally are not enough people to hire. You which, just, you have to just find someone brand new yep. and bring them in and start from scratch, which takes time. And then it's a training budget that, you know, <laughs> you've got to put on your team at the very end of the year to plan for 2023. Yeah. And yeah. in the world of uh, multipliers and utilization rates, um, makes it difficult. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think, um, you know, companies that look to adopt this, they have, they, they don't know all this. They don't know that there's a lack of people. They don't know how many different technologies are out there. They don't know the start to finish of like how much training is this person going to need for the field and the office and the drone and the scanner. And the, there's so many pieces that they figure this out the hard way. Yeah. They start a division, they buy the gear, they start running into issues. They don't have enough software. They don't have enough training. And then it's like, how do we solve that problem? Yep. Do we get training? People are leaving. How do how do we replace someone that just left when that was the only trained person? Uh, do we close it and just use a service provider? It's it's a gam. It's like it's a gamble, and it's also it has major opportunity though. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I think it was Elon Musk, maybe that or somebody. Somebody said um, the harder problem you solve is the one that's going to also pay you more. Yep. You know that that technology is solving major problems. Absolutely. Construction is how much, how many trillions of dollars of waste mm -hmm. happen in construction because of lack of information on sites, mm -hmm. wrong measurements, Scheduling materials waste. don't fit when they get out to build. Um, so it's, it is solving major problems. So there's the potential that companies have by adopting these tools, whether in-house or using it as a project, either way, they get the same benefits out of it. Yeah. Well, and it's looking at, uh, let's just talk drones for a little bit. Obviously the FAA, one, you know, the 107 certifications, you got real estate agents doing it. Yeah. You've, so, you know, people that are not even in our realm are getting this 107 certification. Now I have my own personal opinions on people getting drone certifications for the, the, the realm that we're in. I think it needs to have a little bit, um, a little bit more beef into mm -hmm. that certification process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially as you're closing down, you know, flying in, in Lance oriented environments with yeah. zero ceiling limits yeah. that causes issues. Yeah. Um, so, but there's that process in and of itself and drones are cool. Everybody wants to fly a drone, yeah. you know, it's you go to an elementary school and your father, bring your father to work day and you toss a drone up in the classroom. You're the coolest dad in the class. Like, yep. And, and out of all country. Of them, world. <laughs> right? Oh my God. But, um, you know, he's flying a drone in our classroom. Saw this in a movie. <laughs> yeah. So, and then it gets into, um, how do you bridge that gap with, 
yeah, he's a 107 cert, but this is what we need this person to do and file these waivers. And there's just so much more complexity yeah. into it yeah. um, than just tossing a drone up. Yeah. So, um, again, from a certification process, uh, you know, I, I'm intrigued to hear how, how are you guys helping with that cause? Like, what is what is Nexus doing with that? And, and yeah. is there other entities out there that, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, where do you go yeah. to, to start this process? Yeah, that's a, that's a struggle. Um, and I think we, we as, as doing services from the Nexus side as a survey company, we keep seeing that type of issue across a lot of different tools and industries. And just again, same way that you could get a part 107 mm -hmm. and you could be permitted to take your drone and go do a project. Yet you've never flown a drone before. Yeah. So you're a you're a certified pilot in a <laughs> airspace that's di like, uh. but you might just like I literally have seen someone crash the drone uh. the first time they went to fly it, even though they have a pilot certification. You know, be, it's a because, pretty bad batting average. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, and that is that brings up that problem in the industry in whole. Yep. Is on I would bet right now on a weekly basis, I get a new company who reaches out to me that says, Hey, we bought a scanner. Yep. Whether, and this, it's not a single brand. It's all over the place. It's yeah. every scanner. We bought a scanner. We bought a drone. We went out and did this with it, but our data is not fitting right. Or it's tilting, or mm -hmm. we don't know how to combine the drone and the scanner or they're with all of these tools. They have certain aspects of them that are super simple. Yep. Anyone can turn the scanner on, press the button, it scans, you load that scan in, you have a nice point cloud. Yet different industries, different project types have different accuracy needs, have different complexities. It the approach that has to be taken to do a 12 story building to monitor for lean <laughs> is a lot different yeah. than an office room to do a furniture layout plan. Absolutely. Yet nobody teaches that. What do they learn? That, where are they? Yeah. Like, where are nobody they know. To go? Nobody knows the processes. Like yeah. they, um, and nothing against salespeople either. Like yeah. the people selling the scanners know enough about the scanner. Yep. The, how it operates, but most of the people even out selling scanners don't know that complexity. Yep. Um, and so we, like I said a minute ago almost a weekly basis, I get someone contacting that's like, we don't know how to fix this problem. We just bought this scanner. We can't get the registration to work. We don't know. We, we heard control might help, but we don't even really know what control is, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I also still tell people I don't, I know hard feelings about that part either. Like it just doesn't get taught. Yeah. And so I think what I see and I plan to talk about it a bit at our conference this year is kind of the roadmap that we're going to try to help lay out and get others in the industry involved in the process. Mm -hmm. But it is to create standards and certifications mm -hmm. for these different tools and different processes so that people can actually get trained on what is the approach, what type of scanner should be used if our goal is this oil and gas facility and we need a eighth of an inch tolerance for fab fabrication or what is the best approach for a multi-story building or how do we control like those things are not taught yet. Yeah. And it, and it, it causes problem to the industry because people don't know, they don't know that until they learn the hard way. And then the project messes up, it gets struggle. It's a burn. The client gets burned. It, it delays the industry in whole. Yep. So by figuring out these issues, and how to do proper training and get people on the same page with processes and gear and even clients getting the, the end users, the clients of the data to know those processes so that they can in an RFP properly identify this is the procedure we want. This is the gear we want used or this type because we want this accuracy. Here's how we need the files because it's going to get modeled this way yeah. where right now, most clients who know they need scanning, no idea. They just say, "We just need this scanned." Yeah, and then you get one proposal that's nope. a Matterport. You get one proposal that's a drone bid. You get one proposal <laughs> that's a like a P50. Like you get all variations of bids, and the clients are like, 
why is there a proposal that's 4,000 and 12,000 and 30,000 yep. and they don't know the differences? Well, and each one has different file exports. So it's like, <laughs> they don't even know. In, in my mind, Matt, I look at the, our industry kind of like Hulu, okay? Mm -hmm. or, or the the streaming channels where you pull the plug from your cable provider and now you've got Hulu, you've got Paramount, you've got all these like different apps that you're also paying for on a monthly basis, yeah. you know? And it's like, that's the world that we live in, which is all these different software platforms for all these different hardware um, entities. And yeah. how do you know what one to use? It's, it's, they're all tools at the end of the day, but if you don't know the workflows for each one of yeah. them, um, they render themselves useless. Yeah. And on our end, it's been trying to just streamline those workflows. Um, yeah. But the new tech comes out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, you're trying to learn that new tech and you just got that workflow figured out, but you've got a project popping up in three weeks mm -hmm. that you need to know how to use that. And yeah. it's a thousand acre, heavily dense wooded environment that you're going to, you think you're going to do aerial LIDAR on or, or multi-spectral imagery, but your workflows are still in the work in the, in that work process. And it's like, Oh God, we gotta, we gotta get this captured. How are we going to do it? Yeah. So, yep. um, and maybe that's where people like us and, and, and everyone in our industry that are industry leaders, they thrive in that, like, how are we going to yeah. problem solve <laughs> this situation? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but we have to be able to leverage each other onto it. Yep. Um, and, and again, our partnership from Kimley Horn to, to Nexus has been very strong. Um, and, and you guys have led us... Um, <laughs> you let us see the light at the end of the tunnel on a few different projects for sure. So good. Um, well, that's our goal. It is. And it, it's, it's been fantastic um, to, to really see again, you guys expand that and push that through our industry. So, well, yeah, thanks. I mean that, you know, as I've gone through the journey of, of learning the hard way as well over the last 12 years, it's like, okay, how do we start bottling this information and helping the people that are still earlier on, not go through all the same headaches <laughs> that some of us have already done. Yeah. You know, and currently, like we've talked about, there's nowhere to go do that. There's no, there is no university of reality capture technology tools. You know, <laughs> there's yeah. no, there's no, it, the best you could do right now is like you either try to find somebody that has used it before you're calling around like, Hey, who do, who do we know that has this type of gear that's done this type of work and that also, know, you know, it's so hard to find those or you're Googling it and you're like, you might find a random one-off YouTube video between seven others that have nothing to do with. So I think one of our goals with RCN as we continue to see that being a problem is not just talking with people on a podcast, mm -hmm. but one, I think this does Solutions. help educate, but yes, I think the next step is actually, actually pulling together the industry and creating the solution to solve these problems. Mm -hmm. Having, having available resources for consulting for people that run into a roadblock. There's no known, oh, I can call up this consulting company who has the answers to these technologies. The people in our industry, the faster that they realize that we're all rowing to the same paradise, mm. same boat. Yeah. We all got to get there. So we're all going to get there somehow. But if we actually row at the same time, we're going to get there quicker. Yeah. Instead of the opposite directions. And, and what I mean by that is, is <laughs> tug a rope. Or no? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Reverse. Everybody's on one side of the rope. We need, yeah. yeah. And it's on our end, it's trying to like be able to partner up with other entities that, you know, maybe they're really good at doing aerial LIDAR and we're in the process of really adopting that realm. Um, but I, you know, trying to figure out those workflows. So having that sharing platform to be able to do that is absolutely crucial. Yeah. Um, but, but companies are still in the realm of like, Ooh, yep. uh, yeah. this is our workflow. We're not sharing that. This gives us that competitive edge. Yeah. But when that workflow changes in the next two months as it is anyway, does it really, or two years, like yeah. we're, you're, everybody's back to square one again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talk about collaboration a lot. Like so many companies are that, oh my gosh, this is new. We want to keep it to ourselves, grow the biggest team, be the biggest company and have all the work. <laughs> and it's like, that's unrealistic 100%. because again, the problems we talked about earlier of 
there's a lack of resources. There's a lack of people. There's so many tools. There's so many workflows for each tool. And the adoption of these tools in general is growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. And so by collaborating, you're actually going to get more business. Mm -hmm. Because if you start focusing on the things that you're really good at, and let's say, let's say we have XYZ engineering company. Mm -hmm. And right now they're like, let's build the whole division. Let's have drones and scanners and modelers. And yep. like, you know, the cost and the process to fill all those roles and get all the training and have the right tools. And the, and again, the gears changing out every two years. Yep. It's so difficult that you almost kind of stay stuck. Mm -hmm. Yet, if you focus down and said, okay, let's first just get really good at capture. Mm -hmm. Then your resources are going to a couple really good people training them buying the right types of gear. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to win more scanning work because you've gotten really good at it. You know it inside and out. You know how to apply it to different industries. So you focus on that. So by collaborating and saying, okay, well, when this piece comes out, the drone piece, or when the modeling piece, or when the, like you collaborate on some of these, mm -hmm. and then you have another business who focuses on just that, yep. the modeling piece or the drone, like, by having more strategic verticals or silos and getting really good at that thing and then partnering with someone else who also does the same, those two businesses are now going to get five times the amount as if they would have tried to just do everything on their own. Absolutely. They're because, chasing their own tail. Yeah, because then the modeling company, if they're focused on modeling, when they need scanning, they're going to reach out to somebody that's doing really good at scanning. <laughs> well, and I, a great example is even with Kimmy Horn. I pushed for Kimmy Horn to go and get a BIM team. Yeah. And our, our regional partners, you know, they kiboshed me and rightfully so. Um, they, me and, and my director, um, basically they said, no, we're not gonna do that. We're not an architecture firm. We, we need to go out and let's continue to sub that workout. My response to them was, well, we're a three-legged horse trying to win the Kentucky Derby. And we need to have that, that extra BIM component so let's figure out who's really good in that realm. You guys, there, there's a lot of other service providers that are really yeah. good at focusing on that BIM side. So, but then it's the collaboration of, well, we want, we want to capture it, right? Like yeah. We want it. We've got the technology. We've got the, pe the, the yeah. personnel in-house to capture it. Um, we just want to give you a handoff. Yeah. That, that works only so well though. Yeah. Right. There's hiccups in that, in that handoff. Um, because now you're modeling something and you're inheriting that liability from a modeling stand front, but you didn't perform the capture. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's, there's other components into this, into this partnerships that make it really, really unique, um, and extremely stressful for both entities. Um, you have to have just that solid foundation, yeah. um, from a part, from a pure partnership perspective. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think it, it still, um, I don't know, in a, in a perfect world, as companies grow the use and the team and whatever, I think it is valuable to, to have a certain um, volume of each area internally when you get to be a big, big, big company yep. um, because you want to be able to have someone who knows the ins and outs of each piece so that even if you're not doing all of the work yourself, you have someone who knows it well enough to manage it, to QC it, to work with it, to speak with the clients about it. Um, so I, you know, I think the ultimate goal for most companies still should be doing a certain amount of it themselves. Um, but just the idea of more collaboration in our industry, period, yes. whether you do it internal or not, um, I, I always have surprised people um, telling them that, you know, over the six years since starting Nexus, most of our work has been for our competitors, for yeah. our competition. Yeah. Because we're so open to collaboration, we're not the kind of company that's going to come behind your back and stab you and take your clients and yeah. run away. Yeah. Like, we literally have just said from day one, like, we just want to support whichever piece that you need help with when you need it. Mm -hmm. And that has allowed the mindset to change for some businesses that used to be really competitive to go, okay, let's yeah. try it. And then it works. And they're like, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> when we need another scan job and our crews are tied up yep. and we don't know who to hire and there's, there's, you know, we have a lack of resources. Oh, wait, 
like collaboration, we can just say that guy's closer or he's cheaper or, yeah. and there's a lot of firms are, you know, growing around the country. And so I see that as another long-term piece of our industry is starting to collaborate more as, as we get into projects that are all over the place. It's also, it's very unrealistic for a service to provider to grow and service the entire country. And some people try, yeah. but, can't be the but long term, it's just too expensive. Like why, why would a company and I, we still do it. We're flying across the country tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Why long term would we, for a small job, for a one day project, send a guy with gear mm-hmm. on a plane for a day to get there to scan for the next day and then spend the time and cost to fly back. Mm-hmm. The idea of collaboration also helps the industry grow faster because those smaller jobs are more reasonable now if you're open to collaboration and you lose the travel expense. Yep. Big big efforts, I think travel is rolled in and that's normal. Absolutely. But we can start applying it on smaller needs and growing the adoption by being willing to collaborate with each other. Well, and the clients always, we needed it yesterday, right? Yeah. And that's across the board. Mm -hmm. So when they're already, those expectations are from the very forefront of it, how, how, and you've got a seven or eight week lag time because you're on project. Yeah. How do you best serve that client's need? Yeah. And again, it goes back to growing the, growing the industry the right way, which is servicing those clients, making them happy um, and setting realistic expectations at the same time. And that's hard. Yeah. Everybody in the industry, I think, could agree with me that that is a very fine balance. Yep. Um, totally. Especially the survey entities. Yeah. I, I mean, we're, we're hearing survey survey crew delays of four, 14 weeks, Matt. Ooh. And it's yep. like, yep. well, what are we going to do? Well, let's go out. Let's scan it. Let's fly it. Yeah. Let's blend it. Let's, we, can, we can get some preliminary understanding of what the site looks like and at least start to be able to build some type yeah. of design, prelim design based off of that until our survey crews are, are relieved up um, or the sub consultant surveys are, are relieved, yeah. uh, like relieved to go and do their altas. Yeah. So buddy, it, but again, I, I think, and I hope that people watching this can really sense um, this is a major problem in our industry and yeah. um, it needs to be discussed. It needs to be fixed. Um, but we have to, like you said, we have to do a better job of collaborating with what we think our competitors We're not. No. We're all, like I said earlier, we're all rowing on the same boat to paradise. Yep. We need to start rowing the same the same way. Yeah, totally. So, um, it's so, it's been so unique. And I think that's what, again, in, in my career, so random and scattered of sports and oil and gas. And then now in this tech space, um, it's really what has gotten me to just really like fall in love with it, which is the change um, and the ever evolving uh, aspect of, of our industry. It's so cool. It is. So, so what do you, um, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing right now. Yeah. And, and then maybe a little bit where you see some things going or, um, you know, you have any ideas or future need, you know, what do you what do you want to see? I want to I want to hear a little bit of that. Like From so the you're front? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just industry wise even. It's yeah. um so we're really seeing major um, impact with our water wastewater groups, with our solar groups, with our land development services groups. Um actually was in California all week this week. Uh, me and our our chief pilot um Chris Rose, shout out to you. I did. I told you I was going to do this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were out uh, in California all week, but basically we're seeing major impact within those spaces, and um, it's exciting. It's uh, I'm excited to see the growth within those spaces, especially with large land, so basically land surveys. Yeah. Now they're asking us to to derive preliminary flights or preliminary designs. And I'm very upfront that this is not survey. Yeah. You will need additional survey shot. Um, do not do engineering drawings or record drawings by any means. Um, but you put those expectations up front mm-hmm. and the client is happy at the end of the day. So yeah. um, what I like, what I would ultimately like to see though in the future is 
seeing more simplified workflows, seeing um, some type of, like you said earlier, some type of training programs for my team or even me to be able to go to and learn. Um, that way we can all, we can deliver faster and, and um, more efficiently. Um, what I'd also love to see is the, the crypto or the blockchain technology space really mm. make an impact within our world. Mm. Um, we do a lot of commercial uh, real estate, uh, whether it's flights or scans um, for a lot of major players throughout the country. And I just think of like, this blockchain piece is just sitting here, yeah. you know, and I know the people are so hesitant on like really kind of taking a bite out of that space. Yep. Um, but it's going to be a matter of time. And the, the turnkey solution of being able to be handed over a full BIM model of that entire facility and the improvements that have been done and then being able to add on to that. And it's all in a little, you know, a little um, USB stick. That is so unbelievably powerful. Um, we can talk the metaverse. We can talk. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the the future of our industry yeah. is like the coolest part of it. And yeah. trying to get our industry leaders, Kimley Horn, and I think it's across the board to really comprehend and take off like that hat and just sit yep. down and really listen to what is coming up and what that future looks like. It's hard. It's hard for any of them yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, and it needs to change. Yeah. Uh, we, we need, we need to be a little, I, I would hope that our, our major industry leaders are going to be more open-minded um, to what that future is going to look like. Cause in 10, 15 years, it's going to be very different than where yeah. we're at now. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I think there's a lot of different ideas around uh, like metaverse conversations oh, yeah. and, and um, but the, the push that's happening and the hype that's happening around that right now is also bringing more awareness to the tools that our industry is using. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's going to be a lot of adoption in ways that currently everyone who scans right now, there's a few in entertainment and you know, we, yep. we do a little bit of entertainment, forensic, whatever, but the majority of scanning drone work, all of that is for construction jobs yep. of one way or another. We're going to start seeing a ton of need for scanning, modeling, digital twin creation for things that society are going to start using. Right. So it's going to are not, we already have a lack of people doing this. Right. And now the eyeballs of the world are like, oh, 3D mapping and digital, like my my iPhone scans and I'm I'm putting AR models yeah. on my phone that are popping up in real life. And it's like the technologies are now going to be exploding into so many different directions for so many different uses yep. that all the problems we've talked about are just going to keep compounding. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. It's just, it's. It's like a bad, uh, oh God, I'm going to butcher this TLC rendition. Mm. Don't go chasing waterfalls, right? <laughs> so I think it was TLC or Ace of Base, one of the two. I'm good. <laughs> um, but regardless, uh, it's just that trickle down effect. Yep. Um, and how do we avoid it? Mm. You know, um, and it's, it, we can't. Yeah. We can't yeah. with it. So, but again, as far as future growth with Kim, I would, I, I that is something that me and, Bobby, who um, heads our our entire team with that and visualization, our, our visualization crew is unreal. Yeah, animations, um, 3D renderings, being able to do that all in Unreal engines, and um, big shout out to them because it's they're also on the forefront with us. But they need the heart. They need it scanned. They yeah. need flown. They need yeah. it. They need it captured. Um, so being able to do that in so many different means, AR, VR. I yep. mean. If you told me that I'd be sitting here having this conversation with you when I was in high school, ask having some guy ask me what did I wanted to do when I grew up, <laughs> I it's just it's amazing to see how we've all gotten here. Yeah, yeah. So, well, any other topics you want to hit while we're in here? No, I think the I think the one thing I do want to um, at least discuss is, is the RCN piece. Oh, um, sure. And and 
you know, what does this year look like for you? I know that you've been on other podcasts and touched on it a little bit. So I think that you're fully, I would, would expect an even better turnout than you had your first year. Oh, yeah. Um, you hit it out of the park year one. Yeah. I'm excited to to attend this year um, as well. So I'm intrigued to hear what you got. What you got yeah. Going. I mean, yeah. So those that haven't heard, you know, the conference that we put on. So, I mean, the journey of RCN starting as the podcast to have these conversations and build awareness had continued to grow to just a big community. Mm -hmm. We work with hundreds of people around the country and there are not very many in-person conferences that are focused on this, not these tools for these reasons, getting together to talk about issues, getting together to talk about solutions. Um, so we decided last year to put on our conference for the first time and that was an interesting move. It's uh, chicken before the egg. Like, do we build yeah. the conference and then people come? Like, is anyone going to show up? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we felt like it would work because we have such a, a good community. But it was a it was a really cool turnout. Um, we got a venue here in Boise. Um, it was a smaller venue because we didn't know how it was going to go. So we could only fit 15 vendors. And our goal was to have a little bit of everything, have some hardware, have some software, have some consulting um, so that we could really try to cover all bases in, in discussion. And we, we had spots for 15 vendors and we probably had 50 inquiries year one um, because people see the need for awareness and conversation and the need for getting to getting together in person. It will always beat virtual. And and I don't mean to interrupt you here, but there's a big difference from what RCN is doing compared to a lot of the other conferences. It's like, it's those, you know, those in room meetings where other people are lingering around and you're yeah. sitting and some guys on stage and yeah, you know, you're, it's getting lost in hallways. Yeah. And again, no hard feelings to the other conferences. I, I'm still going. Yeah. I just went, I go to geo week. I'm going to AU next week. Absolutely. I, I love them all, but we are trying to shape ours specifically around how can we add the most value to this tight knit community. And so some of the differences are like, we have one stage. So every presentation is done on that stage. Everybody's watching every presentation. So you're not having to decide, do I want to go see this company's scanner or this software or this use case? You get to see all of them. Mm -hmm. So we, over three days, we split up having presentations from the hardware providers, the software providers. So, you know, Navis, like uh, OpenSpace, all, all of these different hardware software options are coming and presenting their solutions so that the attendees get to be educated on all these different tools. Then we have the other half of presentations are use cases from construction firms, engineering firms, service providers on how they're using them and what the issues are. Um, the other thing I really like that we're integrating is our panels. Okay. So we basically podcast style. We have we we have six expert panelists okay. per panel. We've got one that's focused on land surveying and reality capture. We'll have six land surveyors sitting on a panel with mics with one moderator discussing survey discussing the importance of survey within drones and scanning and doing Q and a with the entire audience. And so the audience six, can ask questions. There are they competitors with each other? They're Detective, all surveyors. They're all, yeah. They're all from different survey companies, different places around the country. And so the whole goal is we're going to make you all sit next to each other. We're going to talk Hash together that. about the issues and the pros and the cons. And what have you seen trying this? What have you seen when you didn't use this? What do you, you know, because I see that a lot in discussion with companies about survey control where there are so many companies that they don't understand survey. They don't know why it's important. They don't even know how it works. So they also don't know what the issue is with not using it. And so by having these discussions and even letting the audience ask questions, it, we try to make the whole conference very interactive, like a big powwow. Like yeah. it's a it's a big mastermind event for for professionals focused on these tools to come share with each other, ask questions with each other and spend a lot of networking time where you're just sitting around uh, in the evening having in-depth conversations with other professionals. That's where I've seen the most value for myself going to other events. So we really try to build it 
based on how can we pr provide the most value to the hardware software people, the actual vendors, the sponsors that are helping grow the event and all of the attendees that are coming. So the intimacy be level behind it I, is the game changing yeah. piece in my mind. Um, yeah. And like you said, it's having that one stage all eyes and they don't have to be on there because it sounds like there's yeah. some networking piece yep. that can go on the background. Yeah. But it's either that or there's not or 10 the, people in your room yeah. watching your presentation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or, but it's, and then it's not like a say, like a trade floor where there's people everywhere. It's extremely loud. There's dogs walking around drones, flying yeah. out, like all this yeah. stimulus, like yeah. it allows you to really hone in. Yeah. And, um, I, I speaking for myself, I cannot wait to, to come up here in a few weeks. And, um, I love coming up to Boise, um, as it is anyway. So it'll be good to come back. And, um, but I, I'm excited to, to see how, uh, round, round two, we're going to call it. Yeah. Round two coast. I know so. we're excited. We, uh, so last year we had about 200 people this year. We expect about 400 next year. We're going to try to expand to a bigger venue, probably still keep it here local, but yeah. we'll, we'll be shooting for some bigger, you bigger numbers. In, uh, Albertsons? Uh, not sure yet. We're going to have to figure it out. Uh, we might put, fill a stadium. Put Who, you on the maybe, smurf turf, buddy. If not next year, maybe the following. I mean, <laughs> 20,000 we could fit in there. Oh, my. I don't know. Seriously, though. Um, <laughs> I, and it'd be pretty cool. See it'd what be, happens. It'd be pretty cool. So, um, But, no, I, again, thank you very much for taking the time, um, letting me vent. I do a little vent session to it. To it's the, fun. It is. And it it's is. educational. It is. I learn, you learn, everybody else who listens afterward learns. Absolutely. Um, I think it it's fun doing these conversations because, um, you know, we continue to get to hear what's going well. Yeah. What are the issues? Yep. What are what are you seeing from the type of company you work at? Now, we, we talk with people in all these other industries and, and it lets us collectively gather data. Yeah. Like if everybody coming in here talking on the podcast says, we don't have enough people, we need more training. Yeah. Like, oh, well, that's a problem for the whole industry, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes to even the hardware, right? Yeah. Just, uh, and by that, I mean the processing software, yeah. the processing physical hardware, the computers themselves, yeah. which I know Nexus is, is dabbled in that as well. So um, yep. it really, I, I love the fact that you guys are attacking it at so many different angles. Um, and finding solutions for those problems. So um, I know our IT team, our IT team, God, every time the conversations happen, Monday mornings, our IT is on those calls. What's going on? It's like, well, we need this, we need this, you know, laptop beefed up. We need better video cards. We need the processing tower. It's got to have more. You keep crashing so, our oh, server. No. <laughs> and they're probably like, what? <laughs> Who are these guys? Yeah. Like, why are they here right now? So Seriously. Um, it takes some crazy infrastructure. And again, that'll be another scaling problem. It does. We we just got to the point where we're running our VPN, able to tap in while we're in the field, tap into it to kick up the data so it can it can process it. We call that the BFM, which um, I'm yep. going to withhold the, yes. <laughs> the spelling <laughs> of that acronym on here. But um yeah, again, I, it's it's solving those those problems, um, and it's nice to see that you guys are tackling all those angles. So, trying to support where we can. Yep. <laughs> well, buddy, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, thank from you. From the bottom of my heart, yeah, thank you for. I, I've watched this podcast for several years, so it's it's finally nice to be able to be on it. And um, yeah, it, thank you for allowing our families to be able to to conjoin here. And I think more people need to build relationships like we have in the industry because yes, it, it really is what's helping provide feedback, solve problems, collaborate. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us yes, today. Sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all.